I'm Viper, and this is Top Gun. Hey guys, I'm Max, and this is WatchCrunch. WatchCrunch.com is a modern evolution of the online watch forum, combining the best of Instagram, Reddit, and traditional forums, all without that negativity and snobbery. So come check it out. So I hate to admit it, but when I see an actor wearing a watch in a movie, I immediately get a bit skeptical and I wonder if it's just a Hollywood prop. So when I saw the original Top Gun movie back in the day, I dismissed that weird black watch on Maverick's wrist. But with the release of Top Gun 2, we noticed that Tom Cruise was wearing the same watch. And the watch that I wear is the original watch, but Jerry Bruckheimer has that watch. So I had to go, Jerry, need the watch for the movie. When a car company makes a watch, you wonder if it's just merch, a way to make a few quick bucks by slapping a badge on some perfume or a mug. But the Chronograph One was so much more than that. First released in 1972 with the reference number 7176S, there were two versions of this watch. From 72 to 75, the watch used the Valjoux 7750, and from 75 to 78, the Lamania 5100. We'll get more into the movements later, but just know that the two look almost identical. The one that I have here is the La Mania version, and technically Tom Cruise wore the Valju in the movie. The design employed by Ferdinand Porsche for this watch was disruptive for its time. An all matte black watch had never been commercially done before that point. His goal was to mimic the instruments on a 911 sports car, stripping away all the distractions so that the eye can gather only the important information at a glance. And to achieve this, Porsche utilized the state of the art technology at that time known as PVD or powder vapor deposition. This process applied an extremely even and thin black coating to the metal surface. And it's obvious that this stealthy look has gained great popularity since. You two characters are going to top gun. In the watch on hand, the dial is further enhanced by five decades of aging of the tritium loom, yielding baton hands and rectangular markers that have turned a beautiful golden color. A striking red chrono hand sits atop the stack, and on this Lamania variant, we get my favorite feature, a fourth lollipop hand that is actually the minute counter for the chronograph. So I think a fourth hand always adds more flavor to a dial, and this has also got to be the easiest way to read elapsed time on a chronograph. We get subdials of the 6, 9, and 12 for running seconds and elapsed hours with a day and date complication of the 3 subtly disguised in black. Around the perimeter, you'll find a tachymeter scale that slopes up to meet the mineral glass crystal. Guys, I had a hell of a time finding this watch and bringing this video idea to life. So if you enjoy the videos on this channel, please help us keep the content flowing by doing all those free YouTube things like dropping a like, subscribing. It really does help. Thank you. Now there's a few differences worth highlighting between the earlier Valju and the later Lamania variants of this watch. The 7750 was one of the most renowned automatic chronographs in history and is still in service today in many of its derivatives. It was designed as a more budget-friendly alternative to the complex Zenith El Primero movement that debuted in 1969. However, in 1975, during the height of the quartz crisis, Valju shelved the 7750 and Porsche was forced to look elsewhere. Enter the Lamania 5100. This great manufacturer's big claim to fame is probably attributed to serving as the base of the 321, which took Omega to the moon. The 5100 found in this watch has some features that make it even more suitable for military use. So Delrin, a high performance plastic, was used for multiple components to provide shock resistance. And a vertical clutch meant that you can leave the chrono running with minimal wear. The movement proved so robust that versions of this watch were deemed by the German military to be fit for service. And those watches wore the military dial and their minute counters had an airplane tip. Now one drawback of having a fourth hand on the center pinion is that this adds an additional millimeter to an already tall watch. 
The tonneau shaped case does its best to hide the girth, but on the wrist it's still a bit of a hockey puck. Maverick Supersonic, I'll be there in 30 seconds. On the wrist, the Porsche Design Chronograph 1 looks like a stealthy instrument taken straight from the cockpit of an F-14. Maybe I'm still on a high watching the movie, but wearing this watch and blasting the Top Gun soundtrack teleports me to a different time. Maybe a simpler time when I was a boy and the world was easier to understand. When there were just good guys versus bad guys, I, I didn't understand words like diplomacy and geopolitics. Now, Cruz's watch in the movie was quite beat up and the PVD coating was wearing off in many places, somehow fitting for the roughness of that character. This one, on the other hand, is almost in new old stock condition. The bracelet is surprisingly comfortable, featuring folded steel links held together by pressed pins. Each link is quite small, allowing the bracelet to conform well to the wrist, and it terminates in a stamped folding clasp displaying the PD logo. So what do you do if you wanna get your hands on one of these classics? Well, like I said, finding one in good condition can be quite the goose chase. Porsche contracted with the Swiss watchmaker Orfina to make the entire run from 72 to 78, and you'll see Orfina printed on some of the earlier watches. After 78, they did work with IWC to make some other models that have a similar theme, but mostly are in stainless steel rather than PVD. Hoyer at some point copied this look with their Pasadena, which has a white date wheel. During the quartz crisis, I believe the design patents were sold to a few other companies like Lejour and Zinn, and you can find their versions of this watch. Lastly, the micro brand Dan Henry did make a faithful copy of the original 1972 watch, which has a quartz Miyota movement inside. Now in 2022, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of this iconic design, Porsche Design released a reproduction of the original, now powered by their in-house Work 01-140 movement. That one is unfortunately priced at around $9,000. So this watch, built for legibility, was used by professionals. Unfortunately, like the F1 Tomcat, is a relic of a bygone era. It makes little sense today in a digital world. But like that Cold War era fighter jet, it still looks damn good as ever. And it's about the stories that these relics tell and the memories that they evoke that brings us joy as watch lovers. In a word, wearing this watch gives me the need Guys, if you haven't gotten enough Top Gun, we're gonna further discuss this watch on watchcrunch.com. Now, we recently launched a curated new section on the site where you can have a one-stop shop to stay up to date on all the latest happenings in the watch world. So if you haven't checked out watchcrunch.com yet, what are you waiting for? I'll put a link in the pinned comments below. Get above the hard deck and I'll see you in the next one.